So hello, everyone. Adele and I were joking a little bit. I asked him if he could sit on the couch just because the view would be broader for him. So we did this intentionally so he could see every one of you. So thank I, you all. I asked if I should lie down and you know, she can be my <laughs> I said, psychiatrist well, here. But it would change the, change the whole uh, MO of the event, so probably not. But um, what I wanted to do, and, and Anil has agreed, that I take a minute just to go over some of his bio, because I think it's important that you understand his background, because the questioning and discussion we'll have this morning really will enhance a little bit uh, of the details behind his answers. So Anil joined the GSA uh, organization just in January, so he's fairly new to the federal government, and he's the director of the Technology Transformation Services, and he's also the deputy commissioner of the Federal Acquisition Services. Uh, Anil is a former executive vice president and chief information officer at SunTrust Banks. Uh, he's also had career opportunities and jobs at IBM and PwC Management Consulting. He has earned a master's of science and a master of philosophy, degrees in management, as well as a bachelor degree in electronic and electrical engineering uh, at the Imperial College in London, England. Um, he's a leader. He's won several awards, including the Enterprise CIO of the Year. So we're thrilled to have Anil. Thank you. Thank you. So Anil, with that kind of background and your private sector experience, can you give us a, an overview of, um, you know, having been a technology and operations leader, transformational CIO, clearly on boards, um, what you have learned in the last several months working at GSA in reference to the TSS? Sure. You know, I, I think the, uh, I'd kind of couch the, the answer in three real areas. One is the time is ripe. Two is, you know, we've really got a great opportunity uh, in federal government in terms of IT modernization. And three is the organization that I joined, TTS, is probably the best position to help. So it, it's really a, a perfect storm, as it were. You know, when I say the time is ripe, uh, the, the private industry has really had, had gone through a huge amount of change from a digital stand, uh, transformation standpoint, probably starting about 10 years ago. I don't know if you know uh, Mark Andreessen, but if anyone's heard of Mark Andreessen, he had this quote back in 2011 that said, software is eating the world. Frankly, that's what's been going on. Platforms are being built, software is being built. You know, companies like Uber and Lyft and a lot of, you know, in the financial services industry, a lot of fintechs have come in and really transformed the industry. And I believe it's now coming to the point in time in federal government that the similar kind of transformation is going to happen. Citizens' experience, citizens' expectations in terms of how they want to inter interact with federal government is really going to change. So the expectation is there, the, uh, the software and, and uh, tooling is there, and frankly, there's a, there's a real uh, recognition on the part of uh, the, uh, the White House, on the part of uh, the CIO community, on the part of agencies to really make the change happen. Uh, it's, you know, you've seen the president's management agenda, you've seen the executive order on artificial intelligence, uh, the IDEA Act, I can go on and on. You, you, there was just yesterday the release of the federal data strategy as well. So, so that, you know, there's opportunities there, the uh, recognition is there, and we in TTS, I don't know how many of you know what TTS does, but we've got uh, a COE group uh, that does uh, agency-wide transformation. We have our AT&F group that does user-centered design and consulting. We have our presidential innovation fellows that really help a lot of agencies in transformation. So we are really well positioned to be part of this change, right? So I think that's my that's my read right now, five months in. So you know, very. Uh, optimistic read, you know, look at me in six years, I might be you know, saying something, something completely different, but uh, I, think, I think we're at the right time. I agree with that. So bringing the, the private sector experience that you've had and the leadership roles that you have, wh what do you think are the key opportunities to focus on in TTS? You, you know, I, I, the, uh, when you think about the digital transformation that's going on, the needs out there are really about 
uh, citizen experience. So if you think about the mission of TTS, the mission of TTS is really about how do you make the lives of our citizens and federal employees better using technology? So the real opportunity is you start off with what I call omni-channel experience transformation. This is about making sure citizens really have the right way in which they deal with, deal with um, uh, the federal agencies. You know, we're working with the USDA right now and uh, we're looking at the farm loan process which is fairly cumbersome and it's mm -hmm. a long process. Farmers basically are concerned about, they don't know where their loan is, they don't know what their loan balances are, they don't know how the approval process is going. It's really improving that whole process, right? And in terms of building a one USDA call center, improving the website. And so there's a whole digital front end, omni-channel transformation opportunity. The second big opportunity is about moving to the cloud and really driving that whole uh, IT modernization capability. So you got, you know, in, you know, not to pick on USDA, but they had 38 data centers. And so, you know, do we really need 38 data centers? There's a whole move to reduce that down to two, which we're well down that process. And there's a, a real opportunity to move uh, workloads into the cloud. Data and analytics and AI is really a huge opportunity, and I think we're just touching the surface here. There's a real opportunity to drive better uh, information uh, uh, decision making, not just in just the client experience, but also in terms of helping the warfighter in uh, the Department of Defense, helping with uh, health and human services, and how uh, we render our services. So AI is a core component as well. And I could go on, there's robotics process automation and so on. We in TTS are building these capabilities to really help, help with the uh, opportunity. That's awesome. So as you had said in five months, your view of the, the organization um, and with your private sector experience, what do you think will be your top priorities for the next, let's say, seven to eight months? Yeah, the, the, this is a... Uh, this is, I really view this as a, a, a journey. Transformation uh, in terms of IT modernization of the federal government is not something that's gonna take place in a year or two years. This is a multi-year program. Uh, and uh, this is hopefully gonna survive my uh, tenure here. And to make that happen, really I think about it in terms of three main uh, focus areas. One is, how do I build momentum? And uh, we've got, uh, our COE program was on two agencies. We just announced a third. So USDA, HUD, OPM. We're trying to get another two agencies up and running from a COE transformation standpoint. So building that momentum, driving the change by one agency at a time is, is something that we need to be doing and doing it at a reasonably good pace. The second piece is really establishing sustainability. Transformation should not be something that's a thing. It should be something that needs to be done over and over and over again on a multi-year basis. So we're building real capabilities in seven areas. Uh, Omni-channel experience is one that I mentioned, IT modernization and cloud, uh, data and analytics, robotics process automation and AI, identity, acceleration and acquisitions. I, you know, there's seven main areas, I'm kind of glossing over them, but, but we can you know, certainly share with everybody what we're doing there. It's not about TTS alone building those capabilities, it's about us working with industry partners to establish that and really build those capabilities and the linkages into industry so that we in TTS become the tip of the spear and we drive the transformation, but we really leverage industry know-how to make it happen, right? So it's not us building the capabilities on an ongoing basis, but this is us building the, the linkages into industry in the right form. So we're talking the same language, we're building the same capabilities, et cetera. So you had mentioned the centers of excellence and um, talked about what they're currently looking at. And you also talked about emerging technology. Can you maybe spend a, you know, a, a minute just really talking about the development of what TTS will do for the next generation of the COEs? So we started off with uh, five COEs, uh, client experience, call centers, 
data center modernization, cloud and analytics, those were the five. We're now expanding that uh, and consolidating a couple of those contact centers and client experience is really one in my mind. It's omni-channel experience. Uh, data center modernization and cloud is really one. It's really, you gotta do one with the other. Uh, but we're building a new capabilities in robotics process automation. RPA with AI linked into it is something that I believe, in my experience working in, in the private sector, we've leveraged in a big way in the financial services industry, particularly because we've got lots of old legacy systems and it's really too expensive to replace all those legacy systems. So robotic process automation is a way to really link and uh, automate across a lot of legacy. So RPA is a new COE that we're, we started a community of practice and we'll start building our capabilities there. Another one <coughs> is identity. I believe identity and identity proofing and identity management <coughs> is a real significant area <coughs> for federal government. When you think about social security, when you think about IRS, when you think about Department of Ed, identity management is a real core capability that we need to have. In TTS, we have something called login.gov, which is really the core basic authentication piece, but we really need to work with industry to go figure out how best to manage identity proofing. So we're actively looking and building a PMO there and uh, having lots of conversations with my old friends in the financial services industry as well to have them join in because I believe banks have gone through identity proofing in a big way. Uh, you've got people like Equifax and Experian, frankly, who had that. And given the breach in Equifax a couple of years ago, we really need to go figure out a new method of identity proofing. So RPA and identity management are two new areas that we'll be building on. So, so as you've done uh, the development on the artificial intelligence, ha have you analyzed the agency's need to do more with data management? And have you, especially with your banking experience, brought how you guys did that in the private sector yeah, to maybe help the government today? Definitely, and data is a, um, the recently announced data strategy, and you probably hear Suzette when she comes in a little later on talking about that, really talks about how do you drive data and you know, build the right governance structure, build the right organization, establish the chief data officer role. I believe the next panel yes. is, uh, is a flotilla of chief data officers, but I think you know, we're, we're gonna have um, data as a core piece and layering on AI to that data is really where uh, industry has taken and private industry has done a lot of work on. Uh, AI is such a big area that, um, uh, and a big opportunity, not only from a client management standpoint, but also from a country's competitive, uh, competitiveness standpoint. So we've really got to build, build those capabilities. So lots of opportunity in defense, lots of opportunity in each of the agencies as well. So the organization and the deliverables around TTS and, and the components like the Center of Excellence and, Excellence, and you had mentioned 18 f Can you just share your input on why it's so important to have those organizations have leadership oversight across the federal government? Yeah, I think we have a, <clears throat> I think we have a real <clears throat> catalyst, catalytic role here. Um, our game plan is not to be a uh, replacer of the systems integrators that are out there or uh, you know, we're not competing against the consulting organizations. We are a catalytic force that sits there and connects agencies to all the different players out there. So, um, and we have that opportunity now to invest. Uh, that's part of what we're doing is investing in new capabilities. And uh, the way I'd see it is in the long run, TTS doesn't exist anymore in 10 years. This becomes embedded in each of the agencies, right? Not, we don't need this organization to persist maybe after 10, 10 years. Uh, but our catalytic approach is really helping federate that whole transformation uh, capability across the, across the organizations. Great answer. I'm gonna go off script. You uh -oh. and I were mentioning how all of your 
private sector experience and now coming into the to the federal government you know why why did you make that decision and why now well you know it got to a point in my um, career that I had actually retired and uh, I was on a few boards and uh, I was actually traveling uh, a fair bit, and uh, when I got the phone call to do this job, my first reaction was, I have no idea about anything to do with federal government, and, uh, and uh, it, I didn't want to have anything to do with federal government, frankly. And, uh, but the real opportunity uh, you know, became pretty obvious when I had started having more conversations. I could sense that the timing is right, and there's a real desire, and having met a lot of the folks, there's a real good desire from a lot of the uh, people in federal government to make a difference. And for me, having been in this country for about 35 years and really benefited from this country, this is a real opportunity to give back. This is not a, you know, if you don't want to give back, I don't think you can belong in federal government. This is about uh, really making a difference for the country. So. Uh, what better opportunity than to make a difference for the country? You know, you have 330 plus million people, 3.6 million um, federal employees, you know, about $100 billion in spend in technology, but who's counting, right? But there's a, but there's a huge opportunity, and uh, it, it's pretty exciting. It's a... Well, we're thrilled that you made the decision. Right. With that, thank you, Emil. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Thanks for, thanks for doing it.